Welcome back to our YouTube channel, Best Freaking Friends Forever. Thank you guys for tuning in and joining us. Thank you guys for commenting below. Thank you guys for subscribing. If you haven't, please do so. We really appreciate those of you that do and will. So today we're going to be talking about the Mighty Ducks. And our trivia question for you guys is, which two duck members or members of the duck team are siblings in real life? So, a little background, or with the stats, the release date was the 2nd of October of 1992. Its budget was $10 million. Opening weekend, it made $6 million. So, with inflation, that was $11 million. And in the U.S., it grossed $51 million. That was, with inflation, is $95 million. And the same with worldwide. It grossed $51 million. So, again, with inflation, it was $95 million. So, yeah. This is a movie, like, we both talked about that we you know, watched it. I mean, I've watched it numerous times as a kid and as an adult. And I never get tired of it, I feel like. Yeah. <clears throat> I know my mom was a big fan of this movie. I know I watched this several, several times when I was younger. But I watched it and it was like watching it for the first time. I couldn't remember a whole lot. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But it was. it's a good movie. I, I actually, um, I feel like I probably enjoyed it more as an adult because mm -hmm. you kind of well like the scene where he drives out onto the ice here in West Virginia it gets cold enough that we can do things like that here so we have my dad's friend has a pond and it one winter it had frozen over real real good and my dad took a fooler out we had two foolers out on that pond riding on it man I know I look back like you trust your father you know you're like that's my dad I'm gonna trust him you're as a kid, you don't sit there and think of like all the things that could happen. And I'm like now I'm thinking, what were you doing, Dad? Why did you put our lives in danger like that? <laughs> so I get like when the mother has that reaction mm -hmm. when she sees Blim out in the ice, I totally get it. Oh yeah, she freaks out on him. Which is kind of interesting because Coach Bombay is played by um Emilio Estevez and other people that have auditioned for it were Tom Cruise, Tom Hanks, Bill Murray, Michael J. Fox, and his own brother, Charlie Sheen. So he got it over Charlie, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. I wish we talked about these, him. I just think he's such a stiff actor. I do not like his acting at all. Well, compared to his dad, I mean, Martin Sheen, he's just... We've seen Martin Sheen in person. Remember? We have? Yes. You don't remember? I've seen Martin Sheen. I don't Shogun. remember this. At Shogun. Oh. At Shogun. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shelly and I had an interaction. Well, Martin Sheen, because I'm like the dummy. Because Shelly's like, Martin Sheen, Tiffany. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> like, I'm like, who? <laughs> and Tony. Um, yeah. I remember names. Like, most people remember their characters' names. I know their actual names most of yeah. the time. So, yeah, he was here in West Virginia. We don't know why. I was just saying, I forget what he was doing. But, yeah, he was being at, at the restaurant we were at. Yeah. yeah. And they, they have, actually, when you go in there now, they have that, like, glass. Well, I don't, they move locations, but they had that glass case and they had a picture of him in the restaurant and he had signed it. And we were there that night. I totally forgot that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we we didn't get we saw him and we walked past him. We never talked to him or anything. Like we didn't. Don't ask us why. I don't. I'm not well, that person. We're not gonna. We're not gonna interrupt his meal. I wouldn't have. No. I mean, now if it would have been like Gerard Butler or someone like that, I'm gonna be like, I'm so sorry, Gerard, but I'm gonna talk to you. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I'm shy, though. So well, I don't it, know. Was, it was nice, too, because from what I can remember, there was only just a couple people that, like, approached him. For the mm -hmm. most part, people left him alone, which in West Virginia, for something like that to happen, is, like, a big thing for us. So mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but yeah, we we left him alone. Yeah, there's just a, a handful of them that I personally would walk up to and be like, oh my gosh, like be starstruck. Um, he wasn't one of them. Well, obviously, I didn't even know who the man was. <laughs> it took me forever to like rack my brain of who Martin Sheen was. I'm like, who? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we got to got to see him live in person. And like I said, he beat out his brother for this role. And again, he plays a lawyer who has gotten in some trouble. That's why he, that's how he ended up having to coach the Ducks anyway, is because he got in trouble for drinking and driving and they made him do community service. And that was his community service. And I think it wouldn't have been a big deal because he liked hockey. He played hockey as a kid and was very good, but he was kind of jaded because of all that had happened when he was younger and as he tried to go pro and which I don't think we find that out till the second movie. Why? Or what happened? I think I don't, he didn't go pro. Yeah. Yeah. Cause at the end of this movie, he goes to try out. Yes, he does. So, but again, he, I mean, we see it's another one of those movies where you see the main character grow and mature. And cause at first he didn't want to coach them. He didn't treat them very well. He coached the way his old coach did, which didn't work. It yes, just made the kids. Yeah. The basically cheating and playing dirty and you know, not the way. And then Hans kind of like talks some sense into him a little bit, or he Hans shows up and kind of like gives him the, you know, the, that's not good. Like you can do better and kind of talks some sense into him. And then he does, he brings the ducks around and he starts coaching how he, how Hans kind of worked with him and how his dad worked with him, mm-hmm. which is kind of nice to see. Well, and then the bond between him and Charlie too, I think is pretty cool. I always like that, that the bond between yeah. them is too. Yeah, they had a good bond. I like that. Well, and Charlie was like, uh, you could tell he craved having that father figure in his life. Mm-hmm. Big time. Yep. Well, he was even making, like, how, inviting him to dinner. They all want, or inviting them to do the sculpture walk. Mm-hmm. And he was like, well, I've got so much homework. So he, like, was okay with his mom. Because most kids that age are not okay with their parents going with other people at first. You right. know, they kind of, you know... So I thought that was kind of interesting that he was kind of pushing it, you mm-hmm. know, and wanted it. But I think that, again, speaks to their bond and speaks how, you know, yeah. he, he likes Gordon Bombay. Yeah. Like, these kids kind of, I feel like they kind of, like the Ducks, they kind of, before he came along, Coach Bombay, they kind of had their own little team going on. They were just not structured. Right. And they need to tell. Yeah. Well, and you could tell with their equipment and you could tell with their padding and things like that, that they didn't have a whole lot of people that were behind them. Mm-hmm. Well, he can't. And, and I know back, he said $15,000 to get them all of their gear. He went to his boss and was like, can you sponsor them for $15,000? i am like, even today, that's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. 15, 000, that's a lot of money. Which, I mean, there's skates and there's, which I know their equipment, they've got a lot more that they got to do. Um, but I saw where a lot of the kids lied and said that they knew how to play hockey and they still ended up, they lied. So they had to teach them all the over again. Yeah. yeah. They said that they could skate and they couldn't. Yeah. That's, this is something else on my bucket list. We were talking about bucket list the last time. And this is something else. I, I, bla- I used to rollerblade when I was younger and Never got to skate. Ice skate. That's on my bucket list. I am going to ice skate one day. I want to, but I don't know. My crazy brain tells me you're going to fall and slice your leg off. (laughs) (laughs) It is scary. I don't know why. Like, I just, because those blades are so sharp. Mm -hmm. And, like, you've seen, like, figure skaters or, like, couple figure skaters that like they'll get too close to each other when they're spinning and they'll slice the other one. Like it's no joke. Like, I, I don't know. All that goes through my mind. Like I'm going to cut a vein or I'm going to literally cut my leg off or something. I don't know. Right. Like, yeah, I don't I know. Try. I just go there, my brain, you know, so I could never. Yeah. yeah. It gets so worse as you become a parent too. I promise. But anyway, like he keeps calling, like he's got a little bit of a personality because he keeps calling Adam, especially once he starts the team because that's a whole nother ordeal that Bombay does to get Adam on the team because of re rezoning or redistricting or that they've redistricted. So really Adam should be on the ducks team. So anyway, but he keeps referring to him as a cake eater. Mm-hmm. 
which that actually is well known throughout Minnesota, which is where they're supposedly from the, the team or most of the people, most of the kids on the team and refers to people who live in the city of Edina, a suburb of Minneapolis. So cake eater is saying that's a person who is rich and they can have their cake and eat it too. And then like, so that was one thing like they kept going back to that. Cause he said it a couple times. Like he really didn't like Adam until basically what? One of the last two games where, you know, the other team mm -hmm. took him out, you know, and he kind of, so that was the first time I think really that he started to be in like, okay, we'll take care of it. Like, you know what I mean? Or he started liking Adam, but, but even like, I think they call don't they call Doesn't he call coach Bombay that too? At one point. Probably. Cause he was a hawk too. Back in the day. Well, and then I didn't realize that Jesse Smollett plays the brother. I'm like, Oh wow. Huh? Yeah, okay. Plays. Cause we all know about him nowadays, like in what all he's been through. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of, I didn't know that that was him. Because I never, Jesse Smollett, because he was, he was he in the, one of the shows, Power or Empire, something. Empire, he was in yeah. Empire, I think, yeah. Yeah, and I didn't realize that his career went this far back. I didn't. See, I didn't either. And I, I can't tell you how many times I've watched that movie and never once have I realized that that was him until all of a sudden this time. And I'm like, oh my gosh. yeah. Like, and he's not changed a lot either. Like, he still looks the same. I mean, really and truly, he does. Right. Well, and so, like, with the whole getting the the kid from the Hawks team over to the Ducks, you know, it's funny because Coach Bombay wanted him on the team to help the team, but he ends up still using his own guys. Like, he uses Charlie to win the, sh the winning shot. Which, that's and, one of my favorite parts. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, and... It's just, I don't know, like, talking about this kind of stuff, you know, it just, the coaching style. So, you have a coach who's just all about winning. Win, 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 win. And Coach Bombay says, you know, let's go out there. Let's get him. Let's get him. And then right before he sends him out, he goes, have fun. That's so crucial when it comes to this. You cannot have a passionate child without having fun. Like, if you start making it all about scoring getting the next one, whatever, and getting the next person trying to get after them and you don't have fun, they lose that. And I think that's like for Coach Bombay when he played and he lost the the winning game, like the championship or whatever, that killed his spirit because his coach wasn't a coach. He was just, you know, this person that's like, it's all about winning, it's all about winning. And it's like, no, what lesson did you... Charlie had to teach Coach Bombay what lesson there was to learn out of that. And he's like, just a quarter inch more and it would have been in the goal. And he goes, yeah, and a quarter inch more, it wouldn't have been. It wouldn't even hit the post. Right. So, and he and he says, I never looked at it that way. A child had to tell him that. Well, and I think he was... Because he, he respected Coach Riley so much when he was a kid. Mm-hmm. But And I love how they parallel that in the movie where they have him giving Charlie the speech after we already see him getting it from Coach Riley. And it's totally different speech. If you don't make this well, we're going to lose and it's going to be all your, you know, basically all your fault. We'll be so disappointed in you. And really, and then he tells Charlie, like you said, to go out and just have fun. And it, if you miss it, you miss it. Mm -hmm. Like, we'll be all right. Like, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Just go out, like you said, go out and have fun. And like a common misconception is to his flashback, when he flashes back to that, his team doesn't lose because he didn't make the penalty shot. They lost in overtime. Uh-huh. Yep. I mean, because he clearly states that they went on to lose in overtime. Yeah. Well, and then like the... Just, yeah. Well, the scene with the with the flags, they, have the, they always post up your flags when you win the championships and stuff. And they had the one where they won second place. I was like, is yeah. that a thing? Like they normally just I, normally yeah. they just don't have that there. It's like you skip a year. So, but yeah, he was like, I wish they would take that down. I'm like, seriously, dude. Which I always say, second place is the first loser. Well, not again, but that's you know that was the mentality of it. Like I mean, like I said, I I think that's cool that they paralleled those two speeches because. Yeah. I think that made a. I think that showed how Bombay did change and how he was a different coach and he wanted to be a different coach than him. Mm -hmm. 
because yeah. of what he did to him. I mean, what, how he, you know, didn't ruin necessarily ruin hockey for him, but it made him definitely. Right. And he know. doesn't want to do that to another child. Right. That's the thing is he's like, no way am I going to do this to another kid and break. Oh. My favorite part would have to be when they fly in the V. I just mm-hmm. like I really like that. It's a good play trick and stuff, and which they do. I think it's in every movie, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in, in some of the movies, it doesn't always work, but yeah, yeah, it's in. I mean, it's it's yeah, it's a that's their thing. That's the ducks' thing is the flying V. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I my favorite part is just when he after he gives him the speech and Charlie goes and does the the um the triple D or the triple D. And just, you know, making it and scoring and just doing, I don't know. I, I just like that part. Right. Um, so, have you ever had a student qu- quack at you? No. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. I've had them do other things, but not quack. Well, I like that because that just, that scene there shows another bond. So, the kids are kind of at it because Charlie was going to stay with coach Bombay and be on his side of things. And the other, there was only two players that did that. And then the other kids were going to just be like, no, forget this dude. But in class, they get in a fight, but then afterwards they start quacking together at the teacher. And it just shows that like, even that's how friendship should be. Like, even if you have your falling out, you're still going to come back and be friends. Like that's a true friendship. If you don't, to me, if you go and just always stay mad at one another, you were never friends to begin with. Yep. It's- well, even how he started coaching where he would be like, okay, you guys can't do anything. And then he did the soft hands or with the eggs and actually taught them, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And coached them. Yeah. That looked like fun. <laughs> Smashing eggs around. <laughs> yep. Well, that wasn't, yeah, you didn't want to do that, but yes, they did. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Goldberg, I think he's there for comedic relief, too. Well, the kid that's always like like this, Shelly, the teach my stir, yeah. Shelly, like that. Yes. I was like, that's I gotta Averman. do something for Shelly. Averman, yep, that's yeah. Averman. He reminds, a girl I grew up with, he reminds me of her brother for some reason. There's just something about him. They have an array of personalities on the team. I mean, they really do. I mean, you've got Jesse, who's kind of hard. Mm-hmm. You've got Charlie, who's kind of the boy next door, kind of, you know. You've got Averman, who's kind of, well, I don't know what to say about Averman. <laughs> <laughs> You've got, um, who else do you have? You have, well, Fulton Reed joins the crew. Yeah. And, and he's, he's like scary kind too. of scary. Well, and he's scary to them, you know. Yeah. And then, yeah, you, Gee, you've got Gee, who's kind of mellow. And the reason why we're doing this these we're going to do these movies this week and we're doing them because on on friday march 26th uh mm-hmm. they're coming disney plus is going to have a tv show a series of mighty ducks and emilio yeah. estevez is revi- or he's coming back i wish we knew if josh jack joshua jackson was yeah i don't i just can't see why they wouldn't well yeah well, see with him because i think he's i don't know if he's got stuff going on or not but like I don't know. I feel like he would need to come back. I feel like Bombay and Charlie need to be back together. I think that would just make you right. know, make it. Well, I hope I hope the original kids come back. Okay. Shelly <laughs> <laughs> uh, earlier asked what two characters in Mighty Ducks are brothers in real life. And the answer is um, who the guy that plays Guy Jermaine which is, he's called, what is he called in the movie, though? He has a nickname, doesn't he? I thought it was Guy. Is it not Guy? Okay. Guy Germain. It's Guy Germain. Okay. I think. Yeah. Guy or I? I don't know. Um, Garrett Ratliff Henson. Mm-hmm. And then the guy that plays Sultan Reed, his name is Eldon Henson, and they are brothers. So Guy and Fulton are brothers in real life. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. That happens a lot. Well, and it was crazy that he, uh, I think Eldon had to change his name 
and dye his hair to get the part, which I'm not sure. I don't know if it's because they, because I, I did look at pictures and I'm wondering if it's because obviously they are siblings. So they do kind of look alike. Mm -hmm. And so that was a reason why they kind of changed his appearance. Right. So that, I mean, uh, or changed the hair anyway, because they were both blonde. Right. But yeah, I don't know. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah, but they, the, well, they did it in Home Alone. Macaulay Culkin's brother. Oh, yeah. Home Alone. Well, hopefully you guys uh, commented down below about our question that we had for you today. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so are you pumped up for the new series that's going to come out on Disney Plus? Are you excited? Are you going to watch it? Um, we're going to do uh, Mighty Ducks 2 and 3 after this as well, so keep an eye out for those. Mm -hmm. And... You know, comment about that. Let us know if you're excited about the, the new series coming out. Like, is it going to, are you going to be able to reminisce a little bit of your childhood getting to see, getting to see this come out? All, All right. right so I'm Tiffany and this is my BFFF Shelly. Join us next time, friends, for another great episode.